Over the past 70 years, we've seen the West grimly impose its hero-centered narrative and subsequent actions on the rest of the world, deciding for the Earth's population what to believe, when and what to be shocked and offended by, and whom to hold accountable. Through boundless media, the West shouts out loud for the masses to openly consume. Those are the enemies of freedom. Acknowledge their aggressive tendencies, they threaten the security of the free world. We must break them. And look at the suffering of their helpless people. We must save them and grant each individual liberty, equality, and fraternity. Originally, this narrative wasn't for the consumption of the world. It was for the ears of their own internal electorates to instill fear into their people, thereby justifying any controversial future actions. If and when the West recognized the ascendancy of a nation along its own chosen path and towards power and prosperity, one that could throw the status quo into imbalance, fear-driven lobbying was triggered. And then, aggressive reactions were taken to put this out of line country back into its proper place. The problem is that once you tell lies repeatedly, not only do your people take in all your falsities as absolute truth, but you yourself start to believe your own propaganda. And today, many Western countries preach from the same pedestal. We know better, not only for our people, but for the entire population of the planet. Is this behavior remnant of long-lost colonialism? Who accepted, or for that matter, allowed these countries to assume the role of a moral compass of the world? Hold on though. To be fully clear, I used to live in the West, and I'm grateful to it for many things. For my numerous friends, for my education, for part of my professional experience, for its priceless knowledge, and for the many tangible and intangible things that have become part of my day-to-day -day existence. But this doesn't mean that the significant intrusions committed as part of their self-serving strategy should go unchecked and swept under the rug. No one needs an accelerated path towards their development of freedoms, rights, economic, and self-governing order. Every nation that preaches freedom and protection of rights historically went through a long and drawn out process that took decades, if not hundreds of years for both their systems and citizens to mature socially and politically into what they are today. Even now, their so-called democracies, freedoms and complexes are showing signs of fatigue and failure. Imagine if in 1852 France threatened to break the United States to impose sanctions or even attempt invasion due to the fact that a majority of Americans still insisted on slavery as the preferred way of life. How would the US government or people react to this threat? This is the most basic of human rights we're talking about. But even then, no one within the United States would have tolerated any such foreign intervention. Where was the United States moral compass when Germany's Hitler took control over the Reichstag? and started invading European countries as if it were a game of dominoes. Was he left to his own agenda solely because of the United States' isolationist policy? Or maybe because the Americans were convinced that as a European, Hitler, in theory, was of a higher innate moral ground. All countries should leave each other to their own individual development. As much as we are the same, we're also different. Different nations need different ways to govern themselves as they might be dealing with challenges far more basic than a right to representation. Something extreme like food deprivation, basic health, or physical safety. Humanity's nature and behavior also vary to extreme degrees. And when we suddenly expose people to concepts of freedom and theoretical order, ones they have yet to grasp and be ready for, they fail miserably. And the whole newly imposed Western idealized system comes crashing down. No one solution fits all. Western nations should be grateful that they were much earlier in their progress towards their own prosperity. They had a fortunate head start. Now allow the other nations of the world to find their path and journey independently at their own pace and allow them to feel their own pain, to repeatedly try and to fail at making a change. And from all their own missteps, they might succeed in finding a way to live life beyond what the West had intended to impose on them.